Hi, I'm Martin from Claremonts.com. I'm going to run you through lots of terminology and lots of knowledge about the game of poker. Action. Action refers to the amount of play in a game. You can have lots of action when there's lots of people betting in the hand. You can have a low action hand when everyone's checking and moving around. The action on you means you're the next person to act in the hand. It's up to you next to decide what you're going to do. An all-in. An all-in is when a player decides to go for broke, to put all his chips in the middle and to try and double up his entire chip stack. We can see an example at the table here. You've got a small blind, a big blind, a call. The player here looks at his cards, got a lovely hand. There's the line, all your chips over the line. All in, all your chips in. If you get a call, you've got the chance to double up. Very risky. A lot of players call all ins when they're bluffing. A lot of players only call all ins when they, when they think they can't be beaten. It's taking a chance. It's a good chance, though, to double your stack by going all in. A back door is uh, when you get a little bit lucky, you catch the last two cards perfectly to complete a straight or in this particular example, I'll give you here a flush. You can see the player here, he's got two clubs. First three cards only included one club. By having the back door there, the turn card and the river card, both diamonds. It was a long shot, but it's worked out for him. It's a back door, the last two cards have worked in his favor and he's completed the five cards of the diamonds to complete the flush there. You can do the same thing when you're going for a straight for instance, by getting the two matching cards that you needed on the turn and the river, the fourth and fifth card. That's a back door. A bad beat. A bad beat is, it's not nice. It's when you're the favorite in the hand, everything is looking very, very good for you, but on the turn of the last card, unexpectedly, things turn against you. Uh, nobody likes to have a bad beat. We all sympathize with the player who has a bad beat, but we all like to be the person who benefits from a bad beat. So that's when the odds turn around after the last card, the person who looked like they were gonna win the hand ends up being the loser. They suffer from a bad beat. Let's talk about the blinds. The blinds are very, very important. The blinds are what starts the betting going in any particular given hand. They're compulsory bets to start everything going. Look at the dealer button here. The dealer button moves around. The player to the left of the dealer, they're the compulsory bet, the one that starts the betting going before we see the flop the first three cards. They're the small blind to the left, and to their left is the big blind. Bluffing. Bluffing is one of the great arts of the game of poker. It's the most satisfying way to win in a hand of poker. It's when you don't have much of a hand, but by sticking a load of chips in, by putting some pressure on the other players at the table, you get them to fold. You get to win the hand when you didn't have the best hand. Bluffing, it can be dangerous, it can be expensive. It's a very, very satisfying way of winning. The best poker players are really good bluffers and the best poker players also spot when the other players are bluffing. The button, as it's sometimes referred to, that's the marker of the dealer. That the dealer button moves around. It moves around in a clockwise motion with every hand. We all take our turn to nominally be the dealer in the hand. To be on the button means that you are nominally the dealer in the hand. And that means as the betting moves around, you're actually gonna be the last person to act in the hand. It goes to the small blind, the big blind. It moves round the table in a clockwise motion, comes back to you, who's on the button, you are the dealer, you're the last person to act in any hand. Some people think it's a position of great strength because you can see what the other people have done first. On the button, the last to act, the dealer in the hand. A call, a call is when you don't raise and when you don't fold. Let's look at an example here at the table of a call bet. We've started the betting off, we've got our small blind for five, we've got our big blind there for two five chips, which is a 10. Action moves around in a clockwise motion. It's this player next to act. If they're gonna call the bet, they just match the previous bet. We sometimes call it a flat call, where whatever the person's bet before, behind them, you bet exactly the same. You're not raising the stakes. You're not folding it out of the hand. You're just maintaining the status quo in the hand by matching the previous bet. That's called a call. The check, the check bet happens in the second and third, and sometimes the fourth round of betting. When you have the opportunity, sometimes, to stay in the hand without placing a bet. Now here we are, we've had the flop, the first three cards come down. The player to the dealer's left, they're gonna be the first one to act. 
Nobody in the hand at this particular juncture has yet in this round of betting made a bet. So you don't have to match anything, you don't have to raise anything you don't want to. To check, you just tap the table and it moves around to the next player. When there's no action and you don't want to put any action or put any chips into the pot, you can check and pass the buck along to the next player in line. Eventually someone's going to bet, but if you want to check and move it around, just to keep yourself nice and safe without playing any money into the hand, that's called a check when you move it around without placing any money. Community cards. Community cards are the cards that are placed in the middle here. They're cards that all of us who are playing in the game of poker get the chance to add to our hand to give ourselves the best chance to win. You have the flop, the first three cards, you have the turn and the river in the game of Texas Hold'em. These are community cards. We add to them our own cards that are nice and secretive to ourselves to make our hands up. But these are ones that are on public show. We can all see what the community cards are and we can all use these cards to make our hands up. Drawing dead. Drawing dead means that you're in a position in the hand where it's impossible for you to have the winning hand, to have a hand that can beat the other players. Here's an example of drawing dead. This player here has got a jack eight. This player here, after four cards have been drawn here, has got the ace king. There is not a card in the deck here that can be placed here as the last card that means that the player here can win the hand. He will be what we call drawing dead. He has got no chance of winning the hand, whatever happens. We'll draw the last card out impossible for the player here to win whatever the scenario drawing dead is not a position any of us want to be into we want our opponent drawing dead so we can't lose the hand the flop once the players have been dealt their hands and the first round of betting has been completed the deal will then deal you out the flop the flop is three cards turned face up that form part of your community cards of your hand you know in a live game of poker the deal will always burn one card and then we'll turn three cards over, called the flop. Ooh, a very nice flop in this case. Two aces here to start your hand off. The first three community cards in the game, they're called the flop. You have the flop, the turn, the river. These are the first ones, the flop. A gut shot. A gut shot is when you catch a lucky card, really. What you're doing, you're trying to create a straight. A straight is five cards in, in sequence. In this case, seven, eight, nine, ten, and jack to make a run of five cards to get a really strong hand. Here, the player with the eight has already got the seven. He's got the eight himself, the nine, and the jack. His gut shot card, it's this one, isn't it? He's hoping and praying. One out of 14, generally. There it is, it's the 10, the gut shot card. It's a very, very lucky one. It'd be a bad beat if somebody got a gut shot on you and caught you off on the last card of any given hand. A gut shot completes a straight by being one of the cards in the middle. Kicker. A kicker is sometimes the very minute difference between winning and losing in a hand of poker. Let's have a look at the example I've put out for you on the table here. We've finished the hand, we've had the flop, and we've got the seven cards to look at. What's the winning hand in this situation? Let's have a look at it then. It's a pair of jacks. Both players here have got a jack, a pair of jacks each. Neither player has managed to make two pairs. They've both got one pair, a pair of jacks. So how do we decide who wins the hand? It goes down to the next best card. So we've got a pair of jacks. What's the next highest card available for either player? It's this card here. It's the ace. So this player has got a pair of jacks with an ace kicker. This player has got a pair of jacks. His next best card is this 10 here. So the winner in this particular hand is this player here. He's got a pair of aces with a higher kicker. Something to back up his pair without making a stronger hand is the kicker. And the ace kicker this time would win the hand for that player. Limping in. Limping in means that you place the minimum amount of chips necessary to keep yourself in the hand when you're the last player to act. We'll make this seem a bit clearer. Let's have a look at the table here. You've got the dealer button, small blind for one. All the players in the hand have bet two chips worth 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. The last one to act here is the small blind. He's already bet five. If he's gonna limp in, he's not gonna raise. He's gonna put the minimum amount in as the last player in the hand to finish off the action. He'll just bet his extra five chips to even it up. He's limped in, he hasn't raised the action. He hasn't been aggressive. He's kept the game fairly low key, limping in. Sometimes people do it as a bluff when they've got a very, very strong hand. Watch out for that. Loose. A loose player is somebody who tends to play a lot of hands, who tends to raise a lot, tends to get involved in every pot. You can never be sure if a loose player is bluffing or if they have a big hand. 
If a loose player plays every hand, generally though, they are running to somebody with a really big hand who will take them down. Loose players, they can win or lose a lot of money very, very quickly. In the muck, that means when you decide to discard your hand, throw it away and surrender in the hand. I'll show you how to muck a hand. The dealer here, small blind, this place is chip here. The big blind behind, he's raised and he's bet another 100. This player here has looked at his cards, he's gone, oh dear, I haven't got very much here, I don't want to play. What they do, they throw their cards into the middle, into the muck, they're heir to the hand. In this case, they've mucked their cards without even spending a dime or a penny or a cent in the hand. A muck is when you throw your hand in and give up. An out. An out is your chance to catch up. Catch up on the last card in the hand. Let's see if there's any outs for one of their players here. Let's have a look at their two hands. The player here with the ace jack, he's got a pair already, he's in the lead. The player looking for outs is the player here with the ace and the king. What are his outs? Then let's work them out. If the last card was an ace, he'd have a pair of aces, he'd win. If the last card was a king, he'd have a pair of kings, he'd beat the pair of jacks. One more potential winner for him actually is the queen as well. We'd have 10, jack, queen, king, ace, a straight. So the player in this scenario has got a few outs. He's got three different outs, three ways of catching up at the last minute. The more outs you have, the more chance you've got in the hand. If you can work out you've got lots of outs, maybe it's a better idea to stay in the hand. If you've got very few outs, maybe the wisest manoeuvre would be to give up the hand, throw it in the muck. And of course, in this occasion, the ace comes, the out has come in, they've caught up. It's been a lucky catch on the river. That's an out. The pot. The pot is the amount of, uh, of chips, the amount of money that's been wagered in the hand so far. The amount that's in the kitty to be won at uh, any given stage of the hand. The pot is uh, here when on the live game right in front of me here. You add to the pot before and during the hand and as you come to the river the last chance to add to this pot the amount of money that you're all aiming to win is with your last set of betting. The bigger the pot the more you're likely to want to be betting into it at the last minute. If it's a very small pot, you're very risky putting a big bet in. If the pot's really very, very large, you want to be in that pot as often as possible for the chance of winning it. There are two different uh, ways of playing the game of poker. You can, you can play no limit or pot limit. Pot limit limits the amount of money, the amount of chips that can be wagered on any particular round of betting. It restricts the amount that can be won and lost in each individual hand. It means that you can budget your game a lot, a lot easier when you're playing pot limits. Some people prefer it, some people don't. Your choice to play no limit or pot limit. Pot limit puts a ceiling on the amount that you're allowed to bet in any one particular hand or any one particular round of betting. A fantastic hand, if you can catch one, is quads. Quads is when you have four of a kind. Fairly rare, and if you get beaten on quads, you can consider yourself very, very unfortunate. Here's an example of some quads here. Three tens down there on the flop, on the turn, on the river as well. One of each, three tens, one in the player's hand here, makes the best hand available to himself. Four tens, ace kicker, quads are a very, very strong hand. Of course, the higher the quad, the better. Four tens will beat four sixes. The rake, is a very, very small amount that you will uh, have be taxed on like a tax of tables. It's like a betting tax at the poker tables. The rake is the, um, a small percentage of the winnings in every hand that are taken by the casino operator or the croupier sometimes, if you're fortunate enough in a live game, as a commission for running the game. So maybe here you've got a great big pot here of about 11 or 1200. Perhaps the rake would be 10, 15 or 20 chips that don't return to you. They go into the kitty of the casino operator and the winning hand gets the rest of it. The rake, normally a couple of percent, goes back to the casino operator or the dealer. That's the rake. The raise. The raise is a way of increasing the pot, increasing the amount of money in the kitty and hopefully increasing your win. It's an aggressive tactic to get things moving. Let's have a look at this sort of pre-flop situation here early in the hand. The dealer's buttons here, small blind, one chip there for five, compulsory bet. There's your big blind there, compulsory bet for 10. That's a call bet there for 10. It's just moving nice and quietly. Maybe the player here has a little peek at his cards, sees they're really strong and thinks, well, I'm gonna put some money into the kitty. I wanna get this pot nice and big so I can win it. A raise has to be double or more the previous bet. 
the bet here was 10, so if you're going to raise, you have to make a bet of 20 or more. So perhaps the player here would bet 300. That's a big raise. The re-raise, the re-raise. We've spoken about the raise when you can increase the pot to increase the amount of money in there to get yourself a nice win. Let's look at a re-raise when the stakes get increased again and again. The example at the table here, small blind for five, big blind for 10. Player here in this position, he's raised to 100. Player here, got a very nice strong hand. He's given three choices now. He can fold his hand. He can call that raise of 100. He can re-raise. He can re-raise re by taking that 100 and doubling it or more. A minimum bet to re-raise would be 200. Maybe in this case, a good re-raise would be to four. It puts the pressure back on the player who's done the raise. Basically, it's you saying, I'm stronger than you. You think you want to bet? No, I'm really betting. It puts the pressure back on the player behind. It's a very aggressive strategy. The aggressive players, they re-raise all the time. They put the players before them under a lot of pressure by re-raising. It's an attractive way to play if you've got a great hand. It's also what bluffers do to try and pinch some money from people who've raised in front of them. The short stack. The short stack is the player at the table with the least number of chips at the table. He's the one that everyone's normally looking at thinking we're gonna try and eliminate him, we'll put him under pressure. When a short stack is put all in, sometimes he won't have enough money to cover the other player's bets. That doesn't matter, he can still push all his chips in and be allowed to bet just that amount. The short stack, sometimes they get put under pressure. Sometimes people will bet against the short stack when they shouldn't. So it's not always the worst position to be in. You can quite often double through your chips when you're the short stack because people will try and get you out of the game. Side pots are when one of the or more of the players in the hand hasn't got enough to cover the entire bet. They go all in with the chips they've got. There's an excess that the other players at the table are playing for that they haven't been funded enough to play in the hand. That's called a side pot. When one player hasn't got quite enough chips to play the entire pot, the remainder is played by the other players in what's called a side pot, which they play separately against themselves rather than with the player who's all in. The most skillful players in live play look for things like a tell. A tell is sometimes a little scratch of the nose, sometimes a nervous little twitter, sometimes it's playing with their chips. It's when a player kind of lets you know what's going on. The highly skilled players can spot what's called a tell in other players. In fact, the craftiest players will throw a tell out there that's a bluff. So tells can work for you and tell against you. Are you good at spotting them? I don't know, I can't. The tell. Two kinds of players generally in the game of poker. Loose players and tight players. Pretty straightforward. A tight player is somebody who doesn't play many hands. They sit very quietly, they fold a lot of hands, they don't get involved in a lot of hands, they certainly don't raise or re-raise very much. But when they come out of their bunker, they normally bet quite heavily because they haven't played many hands, they need to catch up. So watch out for these tight players. When they do play, they play big, but they don't play very often. The more the more disciplined players, I should say, are the tight players, but they don't always win. Something we all try to avoid as poker players is tilt, is going on tilt. After you've lost a hand, if the luck isn't running with you, sometimes you can go, what we say, on tilt. That means that you start betting probably a little bit more than you should, a bit more often than you should, on maybe on hands when you shouldn't be betting. Look out for a player on tilt. Quite often that's an opportunity to win some nice easy chips from a player who's lost his discipline but look out for them as well. If they win, they can win big on tilt.